Program activated. My name is Sean Regalado. Uh, a lot of you know me as Gorilla. Hopefully you guys have been following along as we've been doing some of our interviews over the last week or so, um, where we've been talking with past winners from Plastic Cell competitions. Coming up, Plastic Cell has some exciting things. Uh, they've asked if I would do some interviews uh, with people as they're sculpting. And I'm also going to be working on a series of short videos that kind of walk you through how to make a white cell for all of you beginners who is your first time. Uh, let's start off with just giving you a little background on me um, and how I kind of got involved with Plastic Cell. So um, I'm a high school uh, ceramics teacher. I do a lot of sculpture. Um, I started doing art shows um, mainly through custom toys. So I was doing a lot of monies and dunnies just to start and uh, got into a few other bases. Um, I was introduced to Plastic Cell through a competition that was online on Instagram and it was just a simple sculpture competition and we all entered like random sculptures and then there was uh, voting, I believe there was voting from the internet and uh, I took second place. Uh, the prize for that was the basic white cell which was the first white cell that ever came out. And so um, this is what I won and to be honest, the first time I got it, I, was, I wasn't quite sure about it. I was really kind of thinking, you know, I was taking dunnies and I was becoming a little frustrated with dunnies just because I was doing so many things to the dunnies that they didn't look like dunnies anymore. And so I was getting a lot of like uh, a feedback where it was like, no, I'm not really interested in that because I'm a dunny collector and that doesn't look like a dunny or it doesn't look like a money. Um, and so I got this and at first I was like, you know, I don't know if I need this because I'm a sculptor and this has so much detail on it, I don't, I don't know that I need a base. And, um, and so I, I sat on it for a little bit. And through sitting with it, I started seeing a lot of people playing around with the base. And I started seeing what um, the Tran brothers were doing with the base. And, and you know, there was all this fan art that was coming out. And I was really impressed with the amount of detail they were putting into it and, um, and just how fun it was so I decided that you know I'm, I'm gonna kind of do what what's being done with it and um, I'm gonna make some of my favorite characters and so at the time and still to this day one of my favorite characters was and is um, Nacho Libre I love that movie um, I really enjoyed watching Jack Black in that role so the first white cell I did was Jack Black as Nacho Libre and so here here's what that was now um, I wanted to try and challenge myself so I really wanted to try and capture his gesture um, and the attitude that Nacho had. So um, I started off by just cutting the, the top of the head and uh, putting a dowel on it so that I, I could turn it just a little bit. Um, and then I also cut the arms and, um, and added wire so that I could change them. So, so I was really happy with this. I had so much fun doing it. Um, I decided, well, I gotta do more. and so. Uh, for the next white cell, um, I was looking at a lot of different kinds of... I, I like that pop culture, but I really like uh, cult movies and cult TV shows and, you know, obscure comic books and things like that. So my next um, my next character was uh, Shonuff from uh, Barry Goldie's The Last Dragon, which is, an, again, another one of my favorite films. And I like the characters. I like how many... Um, how much attitude and how much fun detail was in each character so I I did show enough and um, I had a fun time doing that and so since then like any opportunity any art show um, where I can make a white cell um, I'm doing it and so and so pretty much that's how I got started as a teacher I was so impressed with the whole plastic cell company that I reached out and invited them to come in and, and speak to the class and talk about their process and how they got started and, and what it takes to run your own business. And, and so they came in and we got to be friends. With that, I offered that they should come in and, and you know, I was doing designer con, I think, at the time. And, uh, and so I asked them if they wanted to come down and see, you know, what designer con was like. 
And uh, later on, we, we talked about it. And the following year, we did a booth together. And again, I just I had such a good time uh, with them that um, I haven't done a booth since at DesignerCon, but I'm, I'm always going back and whatever I can help out with, I, I do. So I was really excited when Danny reached out and asked if, if I'd be interested in, in interviewing and doing some just some, some simple videos uh, as an educator, doing videos was something I really wanted to learn more about, um, but just asked if I could do some, some simple videos to kind of help out for those of you that are first time um, sculptors. So, so I guess that's pretty much where we're at right now. So for this competition, there are three bases that you can use. We have the White Cell 1, uh, the White Cell 3, and then the White Cell XX. Each base has its own kind of interesting properties. Um, each one kind of lends itself to a different type of character. And uh, I'm going to be doing a video coming up which will kind of go through that as I choose the character that I'm going to be doing for, this, for um, the demos. And I just kind of want to walk you through each one. So the first one is our White Cell 2. And that one came out uh, with a lot of muscle. So it's a very kind of stocky piece. Um, it's got a lot of definition. The arms have veins, that's how much definition there are. And so if you're doing like a superhero, that's a really good choice for you. Um, you can make some alterations if you like. You can raise the head up. Um, you can maybe change the position of the arms if you want. But I mean, if you're looking at like a Wolverine, um, if you're looking at like um, Captain America, any of those um, muscular characters, that's a great piece where you don't have to uh, reinvent any of the muscle. It's all there. Um, the next one is White Cell 3. And uh, that was one of the first ones that came out with the um, eye sockets, which allowed the artist to put BBs or bearing, uh, ball bearings. Um, I use hematite beads. Uh, it allowed you to put a form in the eyes so that you didn't have to sculpt those. So all you're really having to do is sculpt the eyelids or, um, or, uh, or paint them if you want. If you, you, know, you want an open eye, that's fine. Um, and that's that's been really helpful in sculpting. I also like this one because the anatomy is a little tighter, so it's not as as meaty. There's not as many muscles, but the muscles all are, are all there. Um, so if you're going to add a lot of um, clothing over the top of it, it makes things a lot easier. And so this is a really good base if you're going to do a strong but not huge character, um, and you want to have you know clothing on it. So it's a good piece for realism. Uh, the last be base is the XX, um, and that one by far is my favorite. I love it. Uh, it looks like a female form. Um, it can easily be a female form, but I like it because it gives you that option. So, you know, I can keep it very natural like it is and, and do it a female very easily, or I can build it up into whatever I want it. Plastic Cell has released a Snoop Dogg and I believe a Pharrell was on that one so I mean it, it's almost in a sense unisex and and so that's that's why it's my favorite it really opens up for a lot of different kind of sculpting those are the three bases that you're allowed to use now coming up I'm gonna be doing a series of, of videos where I'm gonna walk you through like for those of you that this is your first time ever using a base I'm gonna be talking about some of the tips that you can do um, I'm going to show you how to cut and how to alter the form and hopefully I'll be able to answer a lot of the questions that you have. So this competition's theme is doomsday post-apocalyptic and so the, the people at Plastic Cell have created a really great narrative that kind of explains what the theme is and how that's going to work but they've also thrown in some other challenges that they'd like to see you tackle. The one we probably got the most questions about have been that the character must be merged with something else. So you can't just do Joe Schmo with a loincloth and call him a doomsday character. They want to see that he's somehow or she is somehow merged with some other thing. And so things that you can merge your project with are animals, plants, or humans. You can do objects like metal, wood, computers. You can merge with like actual objects like a car. You can have like the, the whole centaur bike kind of person if you want. 
Um, and then you can also do elements like fire, wind, or water. Now, what does that look like? Um, it kind of looks like whatever you want. That has really kind of opened this theme up to be a lot of different things. We've had a lot of questions about can this theme be, does it have to be original? Can I, can I copy something? Of course, yeah. There's a lot of already doomsday type projects out there or movies out there. So, you know, like if you wanted to do um, Immortal Joe from Mad Max, that's fine. And he's merged because he's got so much like gear on him already. So he's he's kind of merged with all of this like trash technology. Um, so that's a good example. Plastic Cell put up my hip hop frogs as kind of an example of what you can do. So that I just took human anatomy, you know, hip hop culture, beat boys and uh, Mainly I was looking at Run DMC and LL Cool J, and I combined them with Frog and Toad, the uh, children's story. And so that would be a good example. So there really is like so many different kinds of things that you can do with this theme. And that's what they kind of wanted it to be. We're all in this kind of uh, holding right now, waiting for the world to open up again. And so we don't want it to be stressful. But at the same time, we want to see how creative can you be? The rules, the big rules that you have to abide by are um, you're only allowed one entry per person. So you can't make two or three white cells in and submit them. With that said, we've had people where they've taken two white cells and combined them to make one character, and that would be fine. You have to use one of the three bases that I talked about earlier, and they would ask that you please share progress on Instagram. And so while you're sharing your work, if you guys could use the hashtag white cell that's w h i t e c e l l or um or and uh hashtag w c t l m and that way it makes it easier for us older guys that have been doing this for a while that's you know we we follow those hashtags and it's kind of neat because then every day you get to see like whoever's posting and even if we're not following you we still get to see what you're putting up and so that's that's a great way to build this community so just a reminder 6 30 is the is the deadline so everything needs to be submitted by that date we'll be doing the online voting again so that's always a kind of a fun and exciting week or two of competition and again feel free reach out Talk to, to some of the people who have done this before. This is a community that we're trying to build. Feel free to DM me at any time. And we want to help you learn the base. We want to help you be successful. And, you know, this is a really good way to release stress, especially right now. So have fun. Be the maker. See you soon.